So it's my pleasure to introduce our presenters, and I'm going to say just a few words about the presentations, and then you'll hear a lot more from them. Uh, Lucy is presenting on the Foundations Program at, at Rollins College, and I love two things about this project. First, that stakeholders across the institution came together to think in a deeply programmatic way about how to scaffold the LEAP framework for students really campus-wide and, and just knowing how many conversations and effort like that takes um, over how much time is very impressive. And then second is that Lucy will be sharing with us um, not just the pieces of the model that work beautifully, but also the pieces of the ideal model that once it was in practice, it was like, oh, we're getting feedback that these pieces aren't great yet. So really modeling and, and sort of suggesting ways of iterating from time to time based on the assessment of each version. So I really admire that. So Lucy Littler teaches in the English department at Rollins focusing on 20th century American literature, including research and teaching on American exceptionalism and the meanings of race. Lucy presented here in 2015 um, in an excellent presentation called Beyond the Flip that was about her American Dreams, American Nightmares course. Thank you all for being here, and we'll turn it over to Lucy. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to stick to the script for a few minutes and then show some examples, because if I don't, I'll ramble and it'll just be <laughs> Okay, so uh, the title of this presentation is Blending to Help Students Leap, Achieving Curricular Goals and Preserving Student Autonomy. Um, my contact information here, um, my address at Rollins. Um, I really am hoping for feedback about ways to make this better, so if you have ideas, please don't hesitate to either in the Q&A at the end of this or in the future, email me. Um, I'd love to talk about these things as they develop and, and grow. In the spring of 2015, Rollins College launched its Foundations Program, an innovative new general education curriculum rooted in the AACNU initiative Liberal Arts and America's Promise, known for LEAP for short. The LEAP initiative reframes how a liberal education can prepare students to face the challenges of our increasingly complex and globalized world. Its expansive goals include the reimagining of major learning outcomes, pedagogical practices, extracurricular learning experiences, and campus culture. According to George Kuh, the founding director, senior scholar, and co-principal investigator at the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessment, High impact practices are central to the LEAP initiative as they enable active learning, increase student retention, and facilitate and support overall student engagement. Among the big list of high impact practices informing the LEAP initiative are things like first year experiences, learning communities, writing intensive courses, service learning, and capstone courses. Through our foundation, uh, excuse me, though our foundations program utilizes many of these practices at various stages of the curriculum, I'm speaking today about my experiences creating and teaching a capstone. This culminating experience in our students' general education coursework seeks to promote what Jillian Kinsey of the National Survey of Student Engagement describes as deep learning, or the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies across a variety of academic and social activities, and integration of these diverse experiences into a meaningful whole. To achieve this broad and ambitious goal, our general education capstone, what we refer to generally as RFLA 300, seeks to do a bevy of specific things. First, it should be inquiry-based. In fact, we're not, we're not calling it a capstone right now. Uh, currently, we're calling it a practicum to reflect its hands-on and student-driven nature. Second, it should be a multidisciplinary course that not only highlights connections between the students' preceding general edu education classes and propels them into their major coursework, but also stresses disciplinary, quote, ways of knowing. Finally, it must produce concrete, accessible artifacts demonstrating student competency in five of the LEAP learning outcomes, specifically written communication, information literacy, critical thinking, ethical reasoning, and integrated learning. No pressure. 
okay? <laughs> and I should note before moving on, we're already making changes to this overburden course based on its first academic year in practice. Um, in fall 2017, we're dropping our learning outcomes goal for the capstone from five down to three. Uh, but even with this adjustment, uh, this course is still a huge undertaking, um, one that many of our faculty have avoided. In fact, I was one of the first faculty members at Rollins to venture out onto this treacherous limb and volunteer to create and teach this class. I remember sitting in a general education uh, faculty meeting only a couple of semesters into the new curriculum. We'd imagined the capstone, or at least that there would be one, um, but our first cohort of students had not yet reached it. No one had taught it, no one had even proposed a course for consideration. As our program director talked through the multifaceted, complicated demands of the class, I became more and more frustrated, angry even. How could I, with my expertise in English, effectively teach a class from multiple disciplinary perspectives? Um, how could I facilitate student learning in areas like ethical reasoning, a subject I had not studied since undergrad, and frankly, with my own knowledge of my 20-year-old self, study should be applied as a loose term there. Um, <laughs> How could I design assignments that would demonstrate student competency and growth in areas like integrative learning, um, an outcome that the value rubric provided by the AAC and U defines as, among other things, a student's ability to, quote, envision a future self that has occurred across multiple and diverse contexts. <laughs> right? Frankly, these demands annoyed me so much that I left that Friday afternoon faculty meeting in what can only be described as a huff. <laughs> I then proceeded to stew on this problem all weekend long, and then by Monday morning, of course, I had a course proposal. Uh, for me, the solution was blending. Research on the potential of blended learning in higher education is ever increasing, and my guess is that I don't need to defend its value here. We all know how blending can buy us valuable time and space beyond the limits of both a class schedule and a classroom. But most significantly for my purpose in creating a high-impact capstone, a brand new course with significant demands on faculty and students, and high expectations from administration and assessors, blending is not merely an add-on, an addition to a pre-existing course. As Norman Vaughn argues in the International Journal on E-Learning, blending presents an opportunity to redesign the way courses promote active, self-directed learning opportunities for students. In other words, blending is about reimagining not only course delivery and content, but also course ownership, which is a key component of the capstone as a high-impact practice. What I offer you now is a brief description of this course and its blended components. I'll provide assignments, some student examples and feedback, and then I'll gesture toward how I envision changing the course for next fall based on what I've learned, uh, teaching, learned about it teaching over the past two semesters. So the course is titled uh, Racial Fictions, and in its simplest terms, we examine race as both a social construct and a lived reality. It's housed in a cluster of general education classes loosely connected by the theme of identity, which references the IMW that you see there. Students who complete the IMW cluster, or what we're calling neighborhood, uh, will have examined identity from four different disciplinary perspectives in classes that build from their freshman to junior years. In this capstone course, which is the fifth in the cluster, I provide students with cultural criticism and theories on racial identity, we even read a couple of novels on the subject, and we watch a little TV, clips from The Chappelle Show, Modern Family, Blackish, just to name a few. And from this central anchor, students then use blended assignments to trace their coursework back through the neighborhood and also to follow their intellectual, intellectual curiosity forward, making and articulating connections along the way. There are two major blended components in the course. The first, titled What is Race Fact or Fiction, uses Poplet, an online mind mapping program. And the second assignment is titled Disciplinary Perspectives on Race, which uses WordPress, an online blogging tool. So uh, what is race, fact, or fiction combine the poplet and reflective research-driven essay to address the central question of the class, what is race, a fact, or a fiction? 
First, students use Poplet to map out their gen ed coursework thus far. For each class they've taken leading up to the capstone, I ask students to include the following aspects in their mind map. Uh, you can see the list over here on the side. I ask them to give things like a course overview, most memorable assignment, most memorable moment, and down at the bottom, that connection to the overall neighborhood structure, how the class added to their understanding of identity in some way. Um, then, I ask students to take this poplet as foundational work for an essay that brings our class into this developing conversation on the study of identity. Specifically, I ask them to consider any of the following prompts, but again down at that bottom, how does this um, add to your understanding of identity and this, uh, your other neighborhood classes put forth, etc. So, together, this poplet and accompanying essay enabled students to develop skills in integrative learning, defined, uh, excuse me, defined broadly on the value rubric as a disposition that a student builds across the curriculum and co-curriculum from making simple connections among ideas and experiences to synthesizing and transferring learning to new complex situations within and beyond the campus. And also critical thinking, which again is defined on the value rubric as a habit of mind characterized by the comprehensive exploration of issues, ideas, artifacts, and events before accepting or formulating an opinion or a conclusion. So what we have next are a couple of examples of student poplets. Um, you can see the different colors uh, where they've mapped out the courses leading up to the capstone. For example, um, right here we have a human genetics class, the IMW 100. So this would have been the first one in the student sequence, where they highlight some of the things that they did in class. And I don't know from your perspective if you can read it very well. Um, let's see, so one of the things that they note are a lab experiments. Uh, moving over here, um, the IMW 150 would have been the student's next course in the sequence. Um, ideologies and I, uh, excuse me, identities and ideologies, the social science class. Um, this student notes as a memorable moment, for example, going as a class to see the play on campus, Read for Madness. Um, another IMW 150, this would have been the humanities class, a philosophy class, um, mind and meditation. And then um, they're allowed to take one class in a different cluster to complement their own neighborhood. And this student chose to take a class in MM, which is Mysteries and Marvels, history period. Mm -hmm. um, and this would have been an expressive arts class uh, specifically about theater. So um, after they've mapped this out, and here's another example that goes through much the same kinds of things. Their humanities class, the social science class, et cetera, mapping out what they did and how it contributed to this growing understanding of identity. Um, so together, this poplet and, uh, excuse me, this is um, an example taken from just one essay in the interest of time. Uh, but there were many examples like this that I could have chosen. This is, uh, in fact, quite standard what the students did. Um, in this particular essay example, in the introduction, the student notes, before taking this class, I would have answered that race and racial identity are fact. But now, critical thinking, right, not making that as a uh, uh, assumption, but but bearing it out through reading, and thinking, and experience, etc. I'm inclined to believe that they are at their core fact, but mankind has added strong narrative and defining stereotypes to their existence, so there are now layers of fiction surrounding those wars. Quite a complicated understanding of race from the student's point of view after going through this process. Um, in the example, excuse me, in the body of the essay, she referenced her biology class, a human genetics class, uh, specifically her surprise to find that genetically we're all pretty much the same, depending not even, uh, excuse me, not, um, no matter what we look like on the top. Uh, she talked about the sociology class that she took that had more to do with class and identity uh, formation. Uh, she referenced readings and discussion from our class and her own personal experience. She was a young African American woman and her experience very much played up into her understanding of racial identity and where she was now based on the classes she'd taken. And in the conclusion, she made a reference to this kind of connective thinking, this integrative learning, these disciplinary ways of knowing as well. She said, although it does not exist scientifically or genetically, it's very prevalent in other disciplines such as the humanities and the social sciences. So again, she's showing those connections that she's made over time. Student feedback, I thought, reflected that same kind of integration, that same kind of connectivity. Uh, the student says, Poplet allowed me to tell a story about my prior experiences in the neighborhood program. The program helped me make, make connections between each of the neighborhood courses I had taken thus far. Um, 
So the second um, assignment, uh, excuse me, the second blended assignment in this capstone was an online research journal using the popular blogging tool um, WordPress. Uh, using WordPress for this journal was actually an idea that I took home from this very conference a couple of years ago. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't pause to thank Laura Tao and Jennifer Jarson, who are presenting in another room right now, I think, um, for their presentation at the 2015 iteration of this conference on using WordPress to develop students' uh, skills in information literacy. Um, for this capstone class, Students built WordPress sites that documented and showcased their research on the topic of race through a particular disciplinary lens of their choosing. So in addition to providing an artifact accessible for the Leap Value Rubric for information literacy, this WordPress research journal also helped facilitate the multidisciplinary and student-driven nature of the capstone class. Um, in fact, I introduced this project to the class by stating my own limitations that I could not pretend to be a biologist, that I could not pretend to be a political scientist, and the list goes on, I can barely pretend to be an English professor, <laughs> and, um, uh, that this class was going to, this part of the class was going to be a blind spot for me. Um, I genuinely had no idea um, what they would uncover, and I would be learning from them. Um, having said that, I didn't want students to feel completely rudderless, so I did provide a solid framework of support. Um, for one, as I drafted the assignment, I reached out to colleagues across campus for some starting ideas. Uh, when I presented them to the students, I called them idea banks, helpful starting points for their group's research that came from actual people on campus, scholars in the field that I could point to and say, Dr. So-and-so suggested you take a look into this, right? Um, to further support students, I required them to meet twice with an assigned research librarian who specializes in the particular disciplinary lens through which the group was examining race. They met once very early in the process and then again once about three quarters of the way through. Um, this librarian helps students navigate the research process from topic development and focus to finding useful sources to considering the ethical use of materials in their own work. <clears throat> Finally, I had specific requirements regarding what to actually post for each scheduled deadline. Um, first, there were source posts. And as you can see, this is basically an uh, annotated bibliography entry. Um, I don't know about if you all have experience doing this, but you assign an annotated bibliography in kind of the drafting stages of the paper, and the students all groan, and it all feels like busy work, and they don't understand why they're having to do it. Um, when I called it a source post, and only asked for a few at a time every couple of weeks, there was no groaning. And it was really good that all of the, the source posts were very thoughtful, accurate, and in-depth summaries of these sources. I don't know if they just didn't know they were doing an annotated bibliography or if there was something different about this, but it was definitely a positive experience. Um, then we had process posts where students actually commented on how they found the stuff they found. Uh, they might enter, uh, they might talk about the search terms that they used or a conversation they had with the research librarian or even things that weren't going well, but they just talked about the process of how they actually found things. And then there were reflection posts. And this was, instead of talking about an individual thing like they did in the first two categories, in the reflection post they would stop every few weeks and look at what they collected as a group and look for trends, synthesize what was going on overall. <clears throat> and looking back through their journals, I've noted common patterns in their process posts, for example. Students regularly discuss their broad and often uncertain starting points, like Google or our college's library search engine, if we're lucky. <laughs> um, which, through further research and guidance from their assigned librarian, became more focused around emerging trends, which they often go into in-depth discussing in their reflection posts. Uh, for example, the two social science groups focused increasingly on policing and educational issues, respectively. Uh, the science group followed two main threads. Uh, they ended up focusing on eugenics and implicit bias. Uh, the humanities group focused on literary and film criticism with an additional little foray into pop culture. No group wanted to do the expressive arts. I don't know why, but I wasn't about to make them do something they wanted to do. So we didn't have an expressive arts group in this particular class. Um, so what I have, uh, excuse me, um, at the end of the semester, groups then presented their findings in group 
presentations to the class. So as a group, we all got at least a little taste of all of these disciplinary perspectives from these groups as they taught us what they learned. And this is just a, a these are just a few examples of the slides taken from one of the social science groups PowerPoint. Um, in the overall presentation, they presented information in all of these fields within this discipline. Uh, these are just a few examples of the kinds of things that they showed us. Um, and they linked it to specific things like events in Ferguson. Again, it's, it's all divided up into fields and it's all cited and all this great information. Um, I just have to reiterate here, and this is, again, just a very small chunk of their overall presentation. Um, but I have to reiterate here that I didn't teach them any of this stuff. Um, I set up the assignments with a pretty clear framework. I gave them a disciplinary focus with an idea bank. I required the posting deadlines with descriptions, with those kind of requirements. And then I required meetings with the librarian. That's all I did. And then they created and synthesized the content to some sort of coherent meaning. And each group's meaning was different, right? We had two social science groups that went in very different directions. They did that. I didn't. Um, not only did the meaning come out in the group presentations, but also in the individual final product project, project at the end of the semester. From this group project, individuals within each group used what they learned to develop a creative project on their own to share at the Foundation's Showcase, which is a campus-wide capstone celebration um, at the end of the semester. And again, in the interest of time, I just have one example for you. Um, though there were many great examples to pull from, um, one of my students presented a board game um, that she created out of her research in the social sciences group. And she describes the game like this. Um, this game takes you on the journey of life as a white or black American. The game portrays the differences in outcomes for Americans of differing races in some of life's most essential and necessary systems education, legal, workplace. While the game of life celebrates happy moments, this game of race is intended to show the situational disparities that people of different races endure. By using random chance to start the game, you determine your race. This game can represent inherently racist institutions in any country or power dynamic, not just the United States. In America, the racist relationships that exist between black and white Americans are both overt and subconscious. And as her rules for the game indicate, and she has a list of how you play and how you move your piece around the board, um, as her rules for the game indicate, the players draw, um, draw cards to determine their paths, and the opportunities and consequences they face as they move around the board are determined by the research that she conducted with her group on the WordPress project. So you can see the lovely little glitter outline boxes. This is where the cards are. So in the beginning, you roll some dice to find out if you get a little black chip or a white chip, and that determines your race. And then you pull cards from these piles, and the card would have, like, move, uh, you, um, you get a scholarship to college, move three spaces forward, and it would be cited with research from her group's presentation. So it's um, a really, really cool project. Um, and as I spoke with this student at the Foundation's Showcase, she spouted off laws, stacked legal cases as if they were second nature, and not as a robot would, showing rote memorization or programming. She spoke about her project and the research journey that got her there with what I can only describe as verve. Her engagement with the topic, her ability to think about it critically and connect it to other contexts, her deep learning was evident in what she produced, in the way she spoke, even the excitement on her face. I will say, however, that student feedback on using WordPress was mixed. Most students indicated that it was helpful to be able to store and see each other's work, but that learning the program was frustrating, and they would likely never use it again. This is a marked contrast from the Poplet feedback. Most students noted they would use Poplet for many purposes, from studying to writing papers to event planning. Getting this feedback reminded me of a conversation that I had with a colleague at Rollins several years ago when I was toying with the idea of using social media as a blended element in one of my American literature classes. I knew he had experience in the area, so I reached out for advice. When I told him I was thinking about using social media for a semester-long assignment, his initial response was quite simply, why? I told him I thought it might liven up the space 
and increase students' interest in the course. I told him I wanted to move beyond Blackboard, our course management system, to something the students would think was cool. My colleague stopped me there and politely broke the news that the students would not think it was cool, specifically because I was requiring them to do it. <laughs> yes. um, he then pushed me again to consider my motives and my purpose. Was I just throwing something in for appearances? Adding it on so that I could say I'd done it. Blended course. Check. Um, he argued that the use of technology in my course needed to serve a real purpose in both what the students were learning and also how they were learning it. Not just an add-on, but vital to the learning outcomes. Looking back, I see my colleague was in agreement with Randy Garrison, who argues in blended learning in higher education, framework principles and guidelines, that blended, uh, blended learning is a fundamental redesign that transforms the structure of and approach to teaching and learning. Again, that issue of ownership, right? Uh, the research journal itself, the WordPress project, has proven useful in this capacity. But WordPress itself, is it tied to that success? Or is the technology in this case an add-on, an unnecessary layer that separates students from what they're really trying to do? So in my freshman writing classes this semester, I had students do a similar kind of research journal with the same kinds of great results. Increased learning and engagement, clear development of skills and in information literacy, analysis and synthesis, stronger final papers, but it was all through Blackboard. This is our course management system. Um, plain old Blackboard assignment portals. Um, you can see the link where they would click on to submit their work. The directions were very similar to the ones I gave my upper level students in the WordPress project. And the tech aspect of this went so smoothly. There were no hiccups, no complaints, no learning curve, no comments, at least in my earshot, that Blackboard wasn't cool. <laughs> Um, next semester, I will teach this class again. I'll keep Pocklet. Um, I might even add more Pocklet at different phases of the class. Its gains in critical thinking and integrative learning, its facilitation of deep learning are quite clear to me. Um, but I think I'm going to trade the potential cool factor, the potential trendiness of WordPress for the simplicity of Blackboard. After all, the point of blending for high impact is not the technology itself even if we have an emotional connection to it. <laughs> the point is the student learning. 